All right, everybody. So we're back with a very quick update after this, for after that first video. Um, I've already implemented some basic gravity and some indicators. We'll go ahead and take a look at those now. So you might notice all of the floating circles and lines and filled in circles and this line extending out from uh, what appears to be us. Uh, those are all indicating objects paths through space as a result of gravity. Everything is nice and curved. We have um, so so fun little bit of uh, space lingo. Whenever you have an object's path through space, it's called its ephemeris. Uh, so we have the ephemerides of all of these different objects, and uh, we can make use of those later. Um, so I just kind of want to show you all how I got this implemented. It's very simple. Um, let me go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and, just like last time, uh, change out the default environment so that it has a little bit more ambient light. So we're just going to turn on that procedural sky. So you see, we still have our little player ship here. This is you, your little first person camera there, your little engine plumes. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at the actual node structure of this, you also have one additional thing, and that is this little doodad called Position Indicator. That is just a sprite 3D with a little dot. Uh, set to transparent and fixed size with a very, very itty bitty teeny tiny pixel size. This is the mark for when the line ends, right? Because you can't show the infinite path. The line has to end at some time. This goes right at the end of the line so that you know where it ends, right? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute. Now, for the actual gravitational controls and testing and all that, I've created. Uh, this little area 3D here, uh, it is just a cube. It's got uh, a group attached to it. That is this, well, it, whoops. It's got, it's just in the group name objects, um, and it has this script attached to it. Now, this script has a lot of things in common with our test player scripts that we had before. That is, it has a velocity because we need to track its, you know, changing speed. Um, it also has uh, a function to produce a random vector 3. This is how you can get it to have a random starting position no matter where you put it. Uh, so it's just going to spit out a bunch of random numbers and compile a vector 3 and return the normalized version of that. Um, we also have uh, a function here that's set cvel and a variable that is whether or not the object is circularized. Now if you take a look in the code here, um, so what that does is it ensures that you're in a nice, pretty, circular parking orbit whenever the object spawns. Um, and even if you have to move it manually later, this circularized variable is there so that you can go through and recircularize it later um, from its process function. Um, we still have the integrate position function that we had before uh, that actually changes where the area to where the area 3D is over time. Um, and then in the ready function, we just change our global translation to a random position within 800 and 2,000 meters of the origin. Uh, that is because the Earth never moves, and there's only going to be one Earth, right? So we can absolutely be certain that vector 3.0 is the Earth. Uh, that is where that will be centered, and so everything can kind of be based around that. Now. Um, before I get into this last function, which draws out the actual paths of things over time, uh, I'm going to go into the singleton I've created that actually has all of the gravity controls. So that is just this gravity singleton. If you don't know about singletons, you can write a script or make a node or make a scene, and then you go to your project settings, and then you go to auto load, right, and then you just select what node or script you want it to load and you can go through and do that from here and that enables you to call those functions or those nodes uh, from any script anywhere at any time because you can know that those things will always be available so I wrote up all of the different gravity functions into the singleton labeled gravity now we're not gonna get super heavy into math so I'm just gonna kinda break down how things work and luckily I did go through and annotate everything so first off, you have this variable g, or big G. This is the gravitational constant. This is the most important number in all of Newtonian orbital mechanics. Um, this is the overall strength of the gravity field produced by any object. 
And then you also have Me, which is the mass of the Earth, which we've just set to 10,000 kilograms. Um, in real life, this G value is itty bitty teeny tiny. Um, it's much, much, much less than zero. So having it set to 500 means that gravity is several million times stronger than it is in real life. So the Earth is fine just, you know, massing in at 10,000 uh, 10, kilograms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, the first function we have here is labeled get FG. That is just get the force of gravity. Now, if we read through the note here, it says, assumes a single stationary body at position vector 3.0, returns the acceleration over one second of time, so the return value must be multiplied by delta to be used, right? So this get fg, it takes in one argument, which is a vector 3, which is the position of the object that we want to know how much it's accelerating due to gravity, and it returns a vector 3. This first variable is r, that is just the length squared of our initial position vector because we always know that Earth is going to be at vector 3.0, so just the length of its position is good enough. Um, now, if that number is less than 1, we're going to assume it's an overflow error or that there should be inside the Earth, and so it's not going to produce any gravity. This prevents us from dividing by 0. Now, if it's more than 1, right, we actually go through the math of, of how gravitation works. If you want to just copy and paste this, you can. Um, I don't really want to go into the math because I don't have a whiteboard program on with me. Uh, but suffice it to say that this is a correct and accurate way to get the gravitational force between two objects. Right? So whenever we go back to our test object script, okay, when we do our integrate position, now every tick it says that our velocity is going to be increased by this gravity singleton dot get fg by this current translation multiplied by delta. That is all you have to do, right? If you want to apply Newtonian gravity in Godot, you just have to do those. That's it. It's really, really easy. Now, for the tracing out object paths, which is really important um, because in 3D space you don't have anything to measure against and it's really hard to like keep track of your bearings because there are no stationary objects, right? This tracing out of your position um, really helps you understand, let's say, when you're going to crash, where other things are going to be, um, if you're where you really want to be. Ooh, this looks kind of weird now. Oh, that's because I've hidden some things. That makes sense. But like you can see, if I accelerate upwards, this slightly moves. If I accelerate downwards, this slightly moves. This is also important because in gravity, I don't know if you know this, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of intuitive sense if you're not experienced with it. Things move in a way that is not intuitive to the human brain because we are used to flat 2D planes where things move in straight lines. And here, nothing is flat. Everything is round. There are no straight lines. So this position indicator and this tracing out through space, very helpful, I have found. Um, I tried a lot of methods, and some of those will be implemented later. Uh, this is the best one that I have come up with. So in order to actually get that, every tick, or every time we call process delta, we need to create, oh, why is my cursor not showing? We need to create a list of points um, and then draw a line based on those points, right? So we have this list, which is variable EPH, right? That's your ephemeris. And then we have the script, which is get ephemeris. And so what that does is whenever you call this script, okay, it gets your current position and calls it the variable last position. It gets your current velocity, calls the variable last velocity, right? It appends your last position to this EVH list and completely clears it out, right? And then we have a for loop, which can run any number of times. Now, because you're working with for loops, this is very computationally expensive, the more objects that you have. So we only have this running for 10 ticks. We're going to add our velocity to our position, we're going to add gravity to our velocity, and we're going to add that position to the list, right? Now, if that position's length is less than 500 meters, that means it's crashed into the Earth, so we just stop. And then we have a little, that um, sprite 3D I showed you before, right, is just going to get stuck onto that last position. 
That is all you have to do. Very, very simple, right? And then, so from your actual process, all you have to do is call get EPH. So that gets you the list of points, okay? But it doesn't get you the actual line drawing. So what I've done is I've gone to the asset library and I have downloaded uh, this tool, which is Draw 3D. This is very helpful, very simple, very easy to use, okay? We've attached that to our main script. Um, and it is just set to the main center position, right, vector 3.0. And we've extended the base script on it so that every time it calls process delta, we clear it out, and then for every node in the objects group, we just call the line, and then we call the list for that node. Super simple. Um, a couple of different ways you could do it. You could have it all be within the one node, but then you have to make multiple copies of the line uh, tool that draws things, one for each node, and then you also have to get the local coordinates. Um, this is a fairly streamlined way to do it, I have found. Um, and so that's where we're going to leave it off for the basic gravity implementation. Um, next time we're going to be getting a little bit more into player controls, we're going to be adding the basic weapons, um, and then we're going to be adding some icons to enable you to fly to other objects easily and match their positions and velocities and their orbits. Um, so once again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or found it at all helpful, please like uh, and subscribe and please stay tuned for the next one and then now i gotta awkwardly close the thing